The Inuit are special people. The old name for Inuit was Eskimo. Eskimo means eater of meat. In 1977, the Eskimos changed their name to Inuit. Inuit means the people in their language. They live in very cold places: Siberia, Alaska, Canada, and Greenland. These are the coldest parts of the world. There are about 120,000 Inuit in the world today. Canada has 20,000 Inuit. Some live very close to the North Pole. The Inuit were the first people of Canada. In the past, the Inuit hunted for all their food. The men traveled in the snow on sleds. About ten dogs pulled a sled. The men killed fish and other animals. Then they went home and shared their food with other families. The Inuit used every part of the animal for food and clothes. They usually ate the fish raw. The women made clothes from animal skins. They made shoes from the skins too. The Inuit had an old custom: the women chewed their husbands' shoes at night. Then the shoes were soft in the morning. The Inuit's life was hard. They lived in houses made of snow. They moved from time to time to hunt animals. Sometimes the Inuit needed money. Other Canadians needed animal skins. The Inuit sold animal skins to these Canadians. The Inuit and the Canadians helped each other. Today in Canada, the Inuit's lives are very different. Most Inuit live in villages. The villages have from 300 to 1,500 people. The houses are made of wood. The Inuit don't travel in sleds. They ride snowmobiles. They buy food and clothes from stores. The Inuit keep in touch with the rest of the world. They use the telephone, television, and the internet. They go on airplanes to cities in the south of Canada. Inuit boys and girls go to school and have Inuit teachers. They learn about the world. At the same time, the Inuit want to remember their language and traditions. They want to teach their language and traditions to their children. In the 1970s, the Inuit in Canada wanted to control their land. In 1999, the Canadian government agreed. The government gave the Inuit a piece of land in the north of Canada. The name of the Inuit's new land is Nunavut. It means "our land" in their language. People decorate their bodies for many reasons. They also decorate in different ways. Some groups of people have decorated their bodies for thousands of years. Other people want to look attractive. Other people want to belong to a group. Some people decorate their lips, ears, and neck to be beautiful. For example, in Africa, the Surmese women wear a plate in their bottom lip. How do they do this? First, a mother makes a hole in her daughter's bottom lip. Then she stretches the lip. Then she puts a small plate in it. As the daughter gets older, she puts in bigger and bigger plates. Other people in Africa put plates in their ears. They want the bottom of their ears to hang to their shoulders. The Padang women in Myanmar are called giraffe women. They have very long necks like giraffes. The women wear metal rings to stretch their necks. They wear more rings as they get older. Their necks become longer. Their necks are sometimes two or three times the normal size. Some women die if they take off the rings. People also decorate their teeth to be beautiful. Many Americans and Europeans like white, straight teeth.
They spend a lot of money to fix and clean their teeth. This is not true in other parts of the world. In East Africa, some people pull out their bottom teeth. They want their top teeth to stick out. In some parts of Asia, women used to paint their teeth black to look beautiful. Today, young people do not do this. In Indonesia, boys and girls file their teeth. A person with filed teeth will have a good and healthy life. People around the world always liked tattoos. Europeans learned about tattoos around 1770. A famous English explorer named Captain Cook went to Tahiti. He saw people there with tattoos. The Tahitians called the decoration tattoo. From this, we get the word tattoo. The Tahitians taught Cook and his sailors how to make tattoos. The sailors returned to England and other people liked their tattoos. Soon, tattoos spread to the rest of Europe. Many sailors still have tattoos. Today, many different types of people have tattoos. For some people, body decorations are attractive. For other people, they are strange. The Blue Men of the Sahara is a name for the Tuareg people. People call them this name because they wear blue clothes. There are between 300,000 and 1 million Tuareg today. They have lived in the Sahara Desert for thousands of years. It is hot, dry, and windy there. Their lives are difficult because of the desert weather and life. The Tuareg do not live in one place. They move from place to place to find water and food for their animals. The Tuareg live in groups of four or five families. Everybody helps each other. The men take care of the animals. The women put up the tents. The Tuareg live and sleep in the tents. Tuareg tents are usually made of animal skins. But today, some Tuareg have plastic tents. The Tuareg dress in a special way. The men cover their faces. The women do not. The men travel a lot in the desert. They need to protect their faces from the dry air and sand. The Tuareg men have many customs about their face. They start to cover their faces at age 25. They do not cover their faces for friends. They use black or white cloth. The cloth is five yards long. They wrap the cloth around their face and neck. You see their eyes, but you don't see their nose and mouth. Every Tuareg man wraps his cloth in a unique way. In this way, everyone knows each other. On special occasions, they cover their faces with blue cloth. The blue cloth rubs on their faces. Then, their faces and face hair are blue. The blue cloth is very expensive. So the rich Tuareg have blue faces. Rich women wear a blue shawl around their shoulders and arms. They rub the shawl on their faces. They want blue faces, too. Tuareg men marry women from the same group. They often marry cousins. The Tuareg women have a lot of freedom. They decide important things about their lives. The Tuareg women have long hair and are very beautiful. Today, many Tuareg do not live in the desert. Countries around the Sahara Desert do not want groups of people going from place to place. Many Tuareg now live in towns. Soon it will be hard to find the blue men of the Sahara. One place where people live under the ground is a small town called Kuber Pidi. 
Cooper PD is in the outback of South Australia. Most of the people in Cooper PD are miners. Miners dig under the ground. They look for gold or special stones. Cooper PD is famous for opals. Opals are beautiful white stones. People put opals in jewelry. Miners discovered opals in Cooper PD in 1915. At that time, many miners lived in simple holes under the ground. Aboriginal people laughed at them. The Aboriginal people are the native people of Australia. They called the area Cooper PD. This means white man in a hole in their language. Today. The homes are not simple holes. About four thousand people live in Cooper PD. About half the people live under the ground. Cooper PD has homes, restaurants, hotels, and churches. It is like other towns, but the people don't have a view. A new underground house with five rooms costs about twenty-five thousand dollars. Some homes have swimming pools. The people of Cooper PD live underground for different reasons. One reason is there are no trees. The last tree died in 1971. People need wood from trees to build houses. The main reason why people live underground is the very hot weather. The temperature in the summer. Goes up to 122 degrees Fahrenheit, 50 degrees Celsius. Underground, the temperature is 77 degrees Fahrenheit, 25 degrees Celsius. People also live under the ground in the Sahara Desert in South Tunisia. It is very hot, and there are no trees. The people there are called Berbers. The Berbers dig deep holes in the ground. Many houses have two or three floors, but they are simple. Air and light come through an open hole. There are about seven hundred of these holes. Thousands of years ago, people hid underground in Cappadocia, Turkey. People still live there today. It is a beautiful place with good weather. In the future, more people will live under the ground. They will have different reasons. Japan has a lot of people and little land. Japan wants to build a city under the ground. The name of the city will be Alice City. About one hundred thousand people will live there. It will have offices, hotels, sports centers, and theaters. Underground cities are very interesting, of course, but can people live with no sun and no sky?